Hello everyone and welcome, this is Alex, the architect for back app and in today's video I'm going to talk a little bit about our APIs. So if you watched the previ previous videos, you probably have seen that we, for every single class that you create in Parse, you already have your endpoints uh, for your APIs predefined so you can uh, insert, delete, query and edit data using those endpoints. And that's pretty straightforward. If you ever use Parse, you probably have used that using curl or perhaps using some of our SDKs. But here on the Parse dashboard, here I have my Dogs and Owners application that we are working on. And here we have API console. So here we'll find two types of API consoles that you can use. The first one is the REST console, where, which will make REST API calls. So for instance, if I type classes slash dog and send query, you see all my dogs show up here, including the owner pointer and the picture uh, object that points to the URL for that picture. But today I want to focus on our GraphQL console. If you click here, you'll end up in our GraphQL playground where you can build your queries and mutations and operate your data. So here you will also find automatically built documentation for all the methods and classes and also the schema that you can download and integrate into your projects so if you're if you're using um, relay or perhaps uh, uh, any other uh, gra uh, graphql clients such as apollo client uh, you can use this information here download it and integrate to your projects and that will be consumed by those projects and automatically integrated but what's really cool about this is that it can help you build your queries and mutations and, and rely on autocomplete to help you do that. So back to my database browser here, I have my dog class with, where I have three dogs at the moment. So let's build some queries on that. So if I come back to the GraphQL console and start typing query, let's call this query uh, get dogs. And if I uh, option space on a Mac or command uh, control space in a Windows machine, it will show me all the options that I have to uh, retrieve data for, data for this query. So I'm going to look for dogs. And inside my edges, I'm going to note, which will essentially loop for every one of those dogs. And then I can put the information that I'm looking for. So let's say I'm wanting the name of those dogs. If I just click play, you see dog one, dog two, and dog three. And I can compose this query as much as I want until it mats all my needs. So I can, for instance, retrieve uh, the age. Oops. And if it's an adult or not. There you go. But since I'm here, I can also retrieve information about the pointers and uh, the relations that I have inside those classes. So for instance, here I have the owner of the dog. But if you see a red mark here, it says there is something wrong with, with this line because this is an object. So it must uh, explicitly tell what information about that object I'm wanting. So. I want the name of the owner, for instance. If I run this, you see that dog1 belongs to Alex and dog2 belongs to Allison. I can also retrieve the picture from here. But again, I have the red check mark here telling me that I must specify exactly what I want about its picture. So I want the picture URL. And there you go, here is my picture URL for that dog. This also works for mutations. So if I open this, let's try to create a new dog. So mutation, create dog. Here I will create a dog. It will ask me for an input. Here I will define the fields that I want to bring in. So the name of the dog, name if I 
remember correctly, is a string. So let's call it Fido. Let's set the age for the dog as 80 years old. Let's set the is adult to true, to false actually. There you go. But here I still have my red check mark telling me something is wrong with this mutation. It's because for every mutation I must uh, retrieve back at least some value. So in this case I'm going to retrieve the dog that I create and from, from this dog I want to see the ID. Now it should work. If I go back to my database browser just to check, there is no dog named Fido here so it is quite okay. So back to API console and GraphQL console. If I run this, it will retrieve the ID for the created dog. And if I go back to my database browser and dog, here you have Fido with eight years old and is an adult. But my pointer to owner is not defined. So let's remove that record and try to recreate it linking to a owner. So if I want to do that, I go back to my GraphQL console, I have also to set my owner. And the owner uh, must specify the object ID for that owner. So let's give this dog to this Alex owner. So I'll need to copy the object ID, come back here, paste it, it actually must, must be a string, and Oops, sorry, this is actually wrong. Uh, I must link with an existing uh, owner. So I'm going to link with this object ID here. So if I run this again and go back to my database and owner, oops, dog, you see that Fido is again 80 years old, his adult is false, but it's now linked to the Alex owner. So when you're building your mutations uh, like this, you can both link for a existing uh, owner or you can create and link a new owner. So this is how you operate your uh, queries and mutations using our GraphQL uh, playground. But this goes much, much further than this. Thanks to our wonderful community, we also let you call cloud code from here, but for this you'll have to produce a few files. Uh, so I'm going to my Visual Studio code here and I'm going to create a, a few files in here. Let's create a new file. This file must be named uh, schema.graphql. And inside here, I'm going to extend my query type and tell uh, with the reserved word resolve that I want to resolve to some cloud code. So we're going to type uh, extend type query. There you go. And I'm going to call a function called hello. And for this, I'll be retrieving a string. And I must put my at resolve. So Essentially, one, what I'm telling here is every time I run a query and inside that query I query for hello, it will resolve to some cloud code and retrieve a string. So now I also have to produce the cloud code that will return that string. So I'm going to create another new file. This file must be named main.js. And inside here, I'm going to define a parse cloud code function that will be called for that for that uh, resolve method. So parse dot oops dot cloud dot define. And in here, I'm going to call give my method a name. So hello. And this I'm going just to arrow function to hello world. I'm going to save this, back to my parse dashboard, go to cloud code functions, click add, and let's add both of our files in here. So the schema GraphQL will be in the public folder, so I have to drag and drop it to the cloud folder as well and deploy.
takes a couple of seconds. There we go. Now, if I go back to my GraphQL console and re fully refresh this so I can retrieve my new schemas. There we go. Here I have to check my HTTP headers. It must be contained in order for me to run this uh, cloud code, the application ID, and, and for depending on the cloud code that you're going to execute, the master key must be present as well. So in here, I'm going to query, hello, and hello, which is the method that I wrote in there. So if I run this, there we go, hello world. So this makes the GraphQL console one of the most powerful ways you have to integrate your cloud code to your uh, GraphQL calls. This uh, has actually no limits on what you can do because you can uh, integrate the, uh, the schemas to your project and deliver all the business logic to GraphQL calls, uh, running cloud code, which is, uh, as I always tell, uh, scalable and secure and error tolerant. So this is pretty much what I have to show you for today. It gives you a good introduction and you can uh, start playing around with GraphQL and calling cloud code from there. And on our next video, we're going to talk a little bit about cloud code validation, which is a new feature that's coming, coming out on Parse 4.4. And it makes really amazing how you can uh, respond or not to API calls depending on validation. I hope you liked this video and hope to see you on the next one. So see you soon. Bye bye.